I'm here in Auckland on a rather miserable day with Clark Gayford, well-known fisherman and host of his own fishing show, on his new boat, the Geno Merry Fisher 795 Marlin. Now Clark, you had a Merry Fisher before, mm. this is a new model. Tell us why you chose this new model. Yeah, well this is quite a departure from the last boat. So the last boat was more, I guess you'd describe it as a, as a family boat. It was a uh, big cabin area, it had the, had the dual um, berths and a, and a table set up here, so it's great for a family boat. But um, Jeannot approached us and said, well look, we've got, we've got the second series of uh, this Marlin model, and the thing that really appealed to me was the ability to be able to use, use the bow, um, and it's sort of gone to that more um, upright, I call it sort of that tugboat look, where you get to utilise the space right around um, the boat. And, and for me, my fishing has evolved to you know, a lot more of lure and casting and, and wanting to you know, utilise the space around you as opposed to more of traditional putting a line down over the side. And so being able to have a boat where you can use the bow, you know, approaching schools of fish and casting off the front of it um, is just uh, such an advantage. But so this boat is, is very set up for a fisherman obviously, less, less so for a, an overnighter or extended trip. Um, would you say your style of fishing is moving more to the kind of soft baits, uh, lure casting, that kind of? I wouldn't what? say I wouldn't say just mine. I think everybody's. I, I think there is. There's been a, a you know post COVID. There's been this huge rush into all things marine and fishing, and we're seeing sort of that evolution of people wanting that that uh, you know uh, next way to do things. And and lure fishing is just such a tidy way to go fishing, and it's so fun and exciting once you once you really get it um, in. And then of course you know what fishing's like. Once you start a different technique, well, of course you need a new fishing rod, and then you need to you know you need an upgrade, and then a boat becomes a natural progression of that. And for that style of fishing, being able to walk right around the boat, like if you've got a, a big fish on light gear, they can go all over the show. And, you know, being able to run right up around the front as it does a big scorching run is, um, you know, a huge advantage. And also just being able to get up the front and sight birds and, and see what else is going on is, has been great. Yeah. One of the issues with a lot of cabin boats in New Zealand is the height of the cabin. Now this boat has a full height cabin. Um, how do you find that? Uh that benefits your fishing. I've bought out a few tall friends and we haven't had too many incidents. I mean this is yeah it is nice and high and when you're uh, um, standing at the wheel you've got that um, you know comfort of, of having that headroom but also being able to come up on the bolster uh, up on the raised footrest and get that great vision um, out forward as well. I've, I've heard someone describe this boat as a, a as a, an SUV of the ocean where it is sort of um, uh, really set to, to, to be thrown at adventure so whether you've got the big roof racks up the front to, to put down your uh, tender or your kayak or any other uh, additional accessory that you, that you might need. It's sort of, it's, it's ready to have everything loaded in and, and off you go. And one of the things I really like about this boat is, is just that ex accessibility. Because you've got these lovely big sliding doors that open up in three places. So not just at the back with a, a little you know, window at the side. You've got full doors that you can pop out of you know, coming up alongside onto a wharf. It's really easy to get out and throw a tender and, and be there ready to go. Or if something happens over there, you're gone through the door. Uh, and of course down the back, that double sliding door gives it nice wide uh, open access. And being glass, you can see what's happening uh, on the back deck. And the, I mean, I mean you can, and if you're counting the sunroof, you've got another access point there. Because the other problem you get sometimes with hard tops is that it gets really hot in here and there's often not a lot of air moving. With a boat like this, you can open it right up or shut it right down. Uh, and the other strength of that is that there's a real, there's a great sound deadening quality to these doors. So when we're underway, we can shut everything up and I think often about my early days of boating in an old two-stroke engine where you sit in silence all the way to your fishing spot and back. You've got nothing to say to each other because you can't hear anything or you're yelling or you, you see someone in the distance with a two-stroke and then you can hear them yelling at each other. Whereas a boat like this with a four-stroke engine on the back, you can shut it all up and you can hear the water hitting the hull uh, as you are underway. And so you sit here having a, a really pleasant conversation as you get to your spot still at, at great pace. Geno Mary Fisher are known for being outboard powered rather than inboard and many boats this size would, would have an inboard engine. Tell us a little bit about the Yamaha four stroke outboard you've got there. Well, it's, I mean, it's, I think it speaks for itself with the Yamaha. It's just, you know, it's probably one of the most reliable outboards in the world that you can have on the back of a boat. And um, yeah, it's, it's, 
perfectly well set up to uh, to push this along. Uh, the beauty of a boat like this and the construction materials that Jeannot uses is that they keep so much of the weight um, out of it. So it's a lot lighter than typically boats of this length and this volume are. So that 200 horse, a lot of people go, well, is that, is that enough to push it along? And, and certainly for, for getting out there and doing what we do and fishing and having, you know, four guys in here with a whole lot of gear, it still, it still gets up and gets you there. What sort of range do you get out of boats like this? You, you mentioned going to the Mokes. Yeah, going to the Mokes is no problem. I typically allow for about a one to one ratio, so one litre to one kilometre, um, uh, using using modern metric. So if we're going out to the Mokes, which might be about 37 to say 40 kilometres off Omaha, you're using about 40 litres out there, 40 litres back plus running around, so plenty to, to get you uh, wherever you need to go. The big hatch at the back allows me to get two full dive bags and a couple of dive tanks. Uh, and there you've also got um, side um, lockers here. One of them is, um, I think one's sealed and one's one's open where you can uh, again slide stuff right back into the uh, sort of Portofino steps back here and, and tuck a, a surprising amount of gear out of the way. One of the striking things about this boat is how open that cockpit is. There's absolutely no seats and yet they're all there. They've, they've folded away. Yeah. Look, you've got to give credit to the French. They do know how to do those finer details well. This boat has a beautiful, uh, well laid out and extremely space age looking dashboard. Tell us a little bit about what we've got installed here. Wow, this is where it's going, isn't it? It's just, it, it, it does, it, it blows my mind sometimes when you sit down and see where, you know, the advances in tech and layout and aesthetics goes. But uh, in, in terms of this, it's just, it's completely functional, as you can see with this great headroom and vision out here. It's starting from the VHF up there, we've got a, uh, a Garmin Electronics put in here. We've actually had the GPS map unit put in, which means we can run a big one kilowatt transducer down the back end here. This is the, uh, I believe that's a CL7 from Yamaha, so that's giving all your uh, engine vitals. So there's, uh, and everything talks to each other now through an NMEA um, a linked set network in fact I think it talks right through to the stereo as well and uh, Fusion sitting here and you know it's a New Zealand company Fusion Marine now bought by Garmin and Garmin uh, screens uh, Yamaha using Garmin screens so they're all interrelated everything talks to each other you've got uh, a nice um, digital binnacle here uh, from the from the engine sending signals straight back so the response is instantaneous and all of uh, your other uh, assortment of switches set up here Right, you've had this boat out on some fairly extensive trips, as yes. you mentioned to the Mokes. Tell us a little bit about the handling and the performance of it. Um, well, a boat like this is sort of a, it's, it's, got, it's got a whole lot of volume. So the advantage and the strength of that is that it is incredibly stable at rest, um, which is great as a fishing platform. Um, on the other one, which was the same hull as this, I think we landed a striped marlin in probably 15 to 20 knots of wind and a fair amount of slop and, and whatnot. And afterwards we remarked, because we were filming the whole thing, how steady the boat stayed through the whole thing which is which is um, great and so a boat like this works incredibly well in a, in a following sea when you've got um, water right up behind you because it doesn't it doesn't necessarily roll there's no sort of pitch in your um, into the water you just um, charge charge down it um, yeah so it's uh, it, it, it it takes a little bit longer to, to get up and get going because of the the nature of it but once you're um, sitting up and underway then then yep, it all comes together uh, so in, in terms of speeds we sit comfortably around I mean 20 25 knots just depending on sea conditions but I mean we've we've raced home um, when time's been an issue and sat at 28 30 knots no problem the other 795 on the same hull we went to White Island we went out of Gisborne and then this we've taken out of um, Tairua uh, we we went out to the Mokahina Islands and we've got plans to try and hang on to this for the next wee while to um, film some more episodes and we've got plans to, to go further afield. So the Mary Fisher 795 Marlin is a fantastic fishing boat. As you can see, huge cockpit, 2.8 meter beam, lots of fishing space, high gunnels, lots of lovely little touches, built in uh, bait tank. This panel which flips up when the motor tilts and it flips up automatically, it's got a little roller. But you flip it down, it's got a bait board on it, you could sit on it, boarding platforms, just everything is thought of for a, a fishing platform. Is the Mary Fisher 795 Marlin the ultimate fishing boat? Perhaps it is. It has masses of space, set up for game fishing, or lure fishing, bait fishing, comfortable enough for a family, and economical. Heaps of space, easy control, a beautiful boat.
John Acklesheim from Boating New Zealand. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you'd like to see more of these videos, please subscribe to our channel.